a Castilian funeral gown. Being an entry in the Virtual Atlantia Historical Challenge, Funeral Effigies and Burials, October, Anno Societatis, 55. The Extant Gown and Its Wearer This funeral gown is patterned after that of Leonor de Castilla, born 1191, died, died 1244, daughter of Alfonso VIII of Castilla and his wife Eleanor Plantagenet, which makes her the granddaughter of Henry Plantagenet and Eleanor of Aquitaine. Leonor was consort to Jaime I of Aragon from 1221 to 1229 until he divorced her on the grounds of consanguinity, said dissolution granted by Pope Gregory IX. The settlement, agreed to between Fernando III of Castilla, her nephew, and Jaime, stipulated that as long as she did not remarry, she would have the castle of Ariza with the attendants, comforts, and privileges she had as Queen of Aragon. Jaime would also agreed not to separate her from her son, the Prince Alfonso, who could live with her. The Infante Alfonso was declared a legitimate heir to the throne of Aragon, but he predeceased his mother. Leonor returned to the kingdom of Castilla with her son, and upon her son's death she became a nun. She died and was buried in the Monasterio de Santa Maria de las Huelgas in Burgos, Spain. This mon monastery, uh, the Monastery of Santa Maria de las Huelgas, is an active monastery. It houses the tombs of 13th century Castilian royalty and also holds the Museo de Ricastelas or Museo de Telas Medievales. Um, between 1943 and 1944, the tombs of Leonor, her parents, some of her siblings, and other relatives were opened for scientific purposes. Leonor's funeral gown was removed and restored. And this image is of the museum portion of the monastery. Um, and her gown is one of its signature displays. The wealthy were buried in their own clothing, but jewelry was not permitted to be set aside for the dead unless you were royalty. Alfonso X would later codify this in his Siete Partidas. Ne neither rich clothes nor valuable ornaments, such as gold or silver, could be put aside for the dead except for a very few people, like the king or the queen or their children. Leonor was buried in a camisa, which would have been white, probably linen, but could have been cotton, with a round neck and a double-fold hem. Over that, she wore a saya encordada, a sleeveless gown of woven silk, colored with vegetable dyes, and patterned with geometric diamond and floral-shaped designs, decorations in green, cream, white, and gold, with the left side open, laced together with tubular tablet-woven silk cords. The silhouette hugs the body to the waist. The dead, uh, the bodies of these highborn, were washed, disemboweled, and embalmed. Their bodies were positioned with their arms crossed, wrapped in rich cloth, with decorative pillows beneath their heads, beneath their heads and feet. The funeral challenge gown, the peyote. A fabric store that had been running for over 60 years was closing for good this summer. Everything was selling at 50% off the original price. Two days before it shuttered, I had purchased a remnant of fine upholstery with a, and a darker fabric that would complement it. Using these fabrics, I had just finished making a peyote, using as closely as possible the cut used for Leonor's, which differs greatly from the cut used in McCall's costume pattern 3653. With the extant piece, the front and back panels are much narrower and do not flare out from the hips. I was in a decorative mood, so I went for a party color look for the front and the back panels of the peyote. It wasn't a true party color because I only had just enough fabric in the remnant to make one cut, so the yellow gold fabric continues over the shoulder and down the back on, the, on that side. But my lady in the story fancies herself a rebel. The saya encordada posed a greater challenge. While I could reconfigure McCall's pattern for the peyote, I could not find any commercial pattern for the saya and had to draft a pattern from scratch for the first time. The closest thing I had to work with was this pattern courtesy of Spanish Pinterest poster and Etsy vendor Ana Villanueva, who also has the following blog, Indumentarse Medieval, uh, dressing, dressing Medievally. 
Uh, it was from here that I saw the detail that the two side panels of the original extant gown are rounded wedges, not pointed triangles. So I took my body measurements and made the bottom of the open edge stop just where the waist ends and the hip begins. For the left side, instead of continuing the rounding upward, I sloped downward slightly at the fold and cut the side panels with the slope up or down at their respective folds at the top. The front and back panels were cut whole on the fold, but then I used a sub-pattern and just continued the straight cut up from the hem to just where the edge of the left armhole ends on each of the two panels, being careful to flip the sub-pattern so the front and back open sides would match. For the fabric, I used a cotton polyester brocade on, the, on sale at a large fabric chain store. Ch chain store. I saw it at the upholstery and curtain rolls rack at Joanne's and just couldn't resist it. For the cords, I used 12 foot long strips an inch wide from scraps of the remnant fabric. Sewed two sides, sewed, sewed two sides each, right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance, trimmed, turned, pressed, slip stitched down the other side and put the resulting six half-inch wide strips together since I hadn't the time nor the budget for tablet weaving silk cords. And this is the resulting dress hanging overnight before hemming. I went back to Ms. Villanueva's blog to create two eyelet tapes that seemed to be what held the cords in place on the extant gown. I created the eyelet tape from pieces of bias tape and attached those two tapes to the saya at the side opening. I added piping for the neck and the deep armhole to give the, those more solidity, and it looked like there might have been piping at the armholes in the extant gown. I also attached another scrap to a tocada gifted to me over a decade ago that was showing its age. For the camisa, I used a lightweight cotton on the earliest chemise pattern from the period patterns number 90, and I used a double fold hem. This is a detail from the Book of Games of Alfonso X of 1283. Of a young woman wearing a red saya in cordada under a blue peyote with a very narrow front panel. Her white camisa is decorated with stylized embro embroidery. This image is two generations after Leonor's death. With very few, well, very few extant camisas exist though and don't show evidence of such detail beyond some possibly couched metallic thread, so I left my camisa undecorated. The lacing down the left side of the saya, though, is still there. And now is the story of a poet with more wit than sense. There was once a Castilian lady who thought herself a poet, but sometimes her wit got away from her. She fancied herself a hoglaresa in her party color peyote. She looked so smug here after publishing some verse that roasted a high nobleman close to the crown. We all know what happened next. Here she is in state after drinking a poisoned cordial. The priest has left for the church and the pine coffin is on its way. Said coffin may have a stylized cross at the top. The coffin would be placed in a limestone tomb in the nearby church. She has a lovely pillow with fine silken fabric for her head and white cotton to lift and place her in the coffin when it arrives and to wrap her in after that. She's being buried in her finery because she is a lady, but her husband will remove her wedding rings when the coffin arrives since they are not royalty and she would not be allowed to be buried with jewels. Her arms will be crossed right over left on her chest once she is placed in the coffin. Her lovely tocada that she liked so much has been given to her daughter-in-law, and she is being buried with a smaller linen fillet instead. And these are the sources. Uh, Femine, a Medieval Women and Gender Index, is a lovely resource. It will take you down all sorts of rabbit holes. Um, one of the rabbit holes it led me to was the book by Gomez Moreno, by Manuel Gomez, Gomez Moreno. Um, the history and the art in the, uh, in the Pantheon at De Las Huelgas, at de, Las Huelgas de Burgos. Um, it was in, that, in, in those first two sources that I found a lot of my information 
about um, the queen herself, although some I knew already, the uh, late queen, and uh, the circumstances of her life and death and burial. And also the lovely blog by Ana Villanueva for anyone who wants to make a saya encordada. Uh, the linen fillet, barbette, coif, two handmade pins, and faux silk snood are courtesy of Historic Enterprises. And if you wish to contact me, my name is Ana de Guzman. My, no, my, my contact is 95270 at members.eastkingdom.org. I thank the people of Virtual Atlantia for this lovely challenge. I was e in equal parts educated and amused, and I hope you were equal, all equally so. Again, my thanks. <laughs>